Hello and uh, welcome to episode 364 <laughs> of Slamfire Radio. This is July sure? 23rd, 2020. 2020? Yeah, this I'm is one of your <laughs> hosts, Gabriel. <laughs> and I'm Barbara Walters. <laughs> and this is 60 Minutes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kelly. <sighs> Kelly, why are you all messed up? Why am I messed up? I'm usually yeah. messed up. I haven't been drinking. Fair. Fair. I should be drinking. No, fair. And 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 I'll thank you to not point out that you're always messed up. That's the kind of thing that I do. <laughs> Stay in your lane. No oh, one can you but me. By the way, I met so many people who listened to the show this past weekend. They said, mm-hmm. "Why is Trevor so mean?" Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> you tell them that I, you know, I don't even do it on purpose. It's just part of my natural charm and charisma. I did actually. Perfect. I said it's your shtick. Yeah, That's did you tell it was also a thing called show banter and in person I basically like hang off of you and I'm really nice? Yeah, you are. Yeah, see? It's just I, I, you know what? I did say that you're one of the nicest people that I know and I love you to death. So. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Why would you lie to these people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Truth means nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It mm. sounds like we're all sick. No, you bastards are sick. I'm fine. I take oh. enough vitamins every day to like bring a horse back to life. Well, that's what you do, don't you? V- veterinarian. That's yep. what he's, oh, that's okay. what he's in school for, I think. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm studying yep. to be a veterinarian. You've got to get your the, supply of ketamine. What's the right. su- what? What is the subject matter this week? Are you, you know, you're still trying to be nice to people. You're still trying to. I am. Um, become more personable and what are you talking about? Talk school. people off school. Last week it was suicide. This week oh, it's it still, is it's still freaking suicide. And if it doesn't oh. stop soon, I'm gonna sh- suck start a shotgun. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think it's the awful. course is supposed to work against that. You're yeah, I read all the, the interventions. Material. It's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I kid. I kid. Um, oh. Yeah, that, that was a really long section of the book kelly i gotta tell you and now i have to sum it up for the other it's students really long by the end of it you want to slit your wrist is that right? it? oh my right? god right. I'm right. So right. make sure it's down this way not this way <laughs> oh thanks expert <laughs> now we have to have a session after the show because you just triggered me you've given me a little warning sign it's a gesture <laughs> i don't know what to look you've for been doing now. research trevor uh-huh. identified it he identified yeah. the risk and now he has to intervene do you know who the largest demographic is that commits suicide? Dennis. Oh. <laughs> People with Take a guess, Dennis. Adriel. Who, who commits suicide more than anybody else? Um, <laughs> Program uh, podcasters. No. Uh, in, ter- in terms of uh, what's your demographic uh, uh, delineation, like province, uh, race uh gender like what's what what are you looking for Go for it man you decide you decide uh, the criteria. northerners I, I bet i bet people in um uh yeah be more specific northwest territories okay well like all right if you want to know the country it's lithuania but like what, oh, okay i thought we were what going for like what age race gender group um males like who, 50 plus 65 white caucasian yes. caucasian males over 65 off themselves more than anybody else on the planet Mm-hmm. And I get it, man, because there's nothing left. Everything is failing. Okay, His friends are dying. Are you probably are you... in a home? Oh, jeez. I actually feel awful right now for seniors in a home that can't be visited. Yeah, like my heart goes out to them. Like that's awful. What an awful situation to be in to be a yep. senior in a home and not be able to be visited. Oh man. Anyway. Same. Some Way calls. to go! This I want Let's to talk listen. about some guns no? and stuff. Yes, thank you. But yeah. first, can I throw Kelly under the bus for taking us down this road? I didn't. I, I didn't bring it up. You brought just, it up. You're like, what I are you asked. studying this week? Don't ask questions. You know I can't <laughs> shut up for like. I go on, man. I go on. Just a rabbit hole. I'm gonna put. Noticed. I'm gonna put you on mute because I'm gonna go get you something to drink. You can't mute me. Only Abel <sighs> can mute me. Mm. Okay, she's gone. Let's talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move the show forward. How about Please. that? Well, you're well, the lead host. Don't let me try, stop you. No, uh, it then. I mean, yeah, pick on. the stuff on the top shelf. I don't know what it is. I'm just, I'm just enabling here. Uh, what we did in Guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. Right now, they've got the Rossi R R92 in 44 Magnum. <gasps> for is that a lever 9. action? 9. Is that like a lever action rifle? 
It's a lever action cowboy thing. Have you gone through a cowboy phase yet? Uh, you know, Adriel, I, 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 I don't have the desire to shoot cowboy know. action because, let's face it, that's pretty awful. It's like where Ipsic shooters go to die when they can't move anymore. They go to cowboy action because, let's face it, you don't have to move. Oh, come on. You, you, you mean you don't want to dress up in chops and a little cowboy hat? And... I will thank you for not referring to them <laughs> as assless chaps because all <laughs> chaps are assless. Otherwise, they're called pants. So anyway. By the uh, pants? Yes. Yeah. No, um, Adriel, I want the guns. Uh, I've looked at a pair of uh, Vaqueros once. Um, I always wanted a double barrel coach gun 12 gauge and i i love lever actions i've got a couple now and i've always oh, jesus kelly is it turpentine or whiskey what are you doing oh, and shit. um yeah man i want to i want to lever action rifle in a pistol caliber like 30, 357 or 44 i've wanted one for a long time i don't think i'll ever pull the trigger on one but that's as far as my cowboy phase goes adriel i like the guns i like 44 magnum it's a, it's a, like reloading it, picking a brass yeah. afterwards, super easy because they're huge. Right? <laughs> yeah. And in a rifle, oh, snotty. Make them just freaking snotty. Something you wouldn't dare shoot out of a handgun. Load them up to like almost unsafeness. Mm. Go to like Captain Andy levels with them. Just Or powder puff and just... Well, you could do that too. And that's Slap the beautiful. Wrist. Yeah, man. Make you it can... happen. Yeah. Yeah. You could totally do that. Uh, Trevor, did you want to start us off with what we did in guns this week? Sure. Um, last Friday night, um, Jason McIntyre, club president and now um, new match director for the Rescue's Gun Club, put on a IPSC classifier match. So, IPSC has a system. IPSC has in IPSC World, IPSC.org, the official International Practical Shooting Confederation, has a system of classification called ICS. And what this is, is a, um, a set of stages that they've designed that are all numbered CSC or CLC45, CLC65, whatever. And um, they're used to rank shooters in the sport of ipsic according to their classification by like you know tallest person down to like tallest midget right so um what you do is you put on a match you build these stages according to the diagram to the letter everything is measured exactly and the reason why is because they're used to compare us against each other if you look at the results from an IPSC match, people like, you know, you could think, wow, these guys are really, really good. Look at all the points or look how fast they are. Uh, must be really good shooters. Well, you don't know. The stages could have been really easy. Every time you go to a regular level one, level two, level three match, it's freestyle. The stages are supposed to never be the same. So every time you go to a match, that's one of the things I love about IPSC. The stages are always different. So you never shoot the same stage twice. Both classifiers they are the same mm -hmm. and the reason why they're the same is so that we can compare apples to apples so if the best in the world shoots i don't know clc 65 and then i shoot clc 65 i have a direct comparison against this individual that's the theory behind it the problem with the system is they suck and um they suck because now, I'm almost indifferent, but the, the, the vast majority of IPSC shooters that I've spoken to uh, believe that they suck. And for a variety of reasons, one of the reasons why people believe they suck is because they're not freestyle. They mandate when you're going to do your mag changes, what positions you're going to shoot from. But it's, it's a means to an end. It has to be that way. It takes the gaming element out of the stage so we can just test you on your accuracy and your power and your speed, the core fundamentals or principles of, of IPSC shooting. So another problem is um, in recent years, the best in the world have not, have not really shot them. So who are you really comparing yourself to? So all that aside, you go to the match, you shoot the stages, you, the match director then submits the results to IPSC World. You have to be registered on IPSC World with an alias. And um, I don't remember giving my alias during registration, so I'm not sure where we're at and all that. Jason's never done this before, so he's going to have to figure it out as he goes, which all new match directors essentially do. Of course, you know, 
I can, uh, he, he can uh, reach out and ask some questions and stuff. But um, anyway, you go to IPSC org and you register an alias. When the results of the match are posted to IPSC org, you can then look up your alias and see your classification. The classification goes like this, grandmaster, master, and then we got letters A, B, C, D, and after D, it's go to cowboy action. Um, Really? Come on, man. D's, D's for dis. D, D's for D is disqualified. For disqualified. Disqualified. <laughs> no. Get out. Um, yeah. D is for doggone awful. Go to go to cowboy action. Anyway, um, a lot. I was classified twice before. Um, both times in standard division. Uh, like my first year, we shot a classifier match, and I was like a solid D. And then I think I shot some the following year and I was a C and then oops, I go and register for the nationals a couple of years ago and I'm shooting in classic and I put myself down as a C because last time I was classified, I was a C. Well, no one told me that I would basically had uh, improved to the point where I was an A and uh, it was confirmed at the nationals. I won C by 20%. And I think Tim Thomas looked at the results and I either, would have won a by 2% or lost by 2% or something like that. So I should have been registered as an a class classic shooter. And I would have got like an a, an award for a or an award for B and in, in, in a division or a class classic. And instead I got this, like my trophy for first place C classic was like bigger than uh, Jim Smith's sixth place overall. Like, like it did, anyway, whatever. Sixth um, place overall isn't nothing, though. No, no, overall. I understand. Not that. within your classes. I mean, I overall. That. Yeah, not no. A thing, though. <sighs> Among all the production people. Ah, sixth place in production. Right. Six, that's still sorry, not, I did do that's a not poor top job three. explaining that. That's not oh, top shut three. your face. It's nationals. <laughs> Listen, why don't you go shoot one of those made up rule things that you call three gun where every time you turn around, it's a different rule set because you guys gonna. don't like it. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> so, um, and then, and so because um, a lot of IPSC shooters don't like the classification system, the sections in Canada don't uh, always use them. So the sections, and I am wholeheartedly opposed to this. I know the system sucks but it is our official system. And until our sports governing body creates a better system, I feel we should use it because it is the one that is official. It's the one that we should be using and everyone would be using the same stages and the same system and we wouldn't have inconsistencies. Here's why I don't give out classification awards at SummerSlam. And if um, I have anything to say about it, we won't give them out when Restigush hosts the nationals either because provinces are using their own classification system. They're making it up. They're making their own. So I could go to BC and shoot a classifier match and have them tell me that according to our system, Trevor, you're B. Then I could go next door to Alberta and shoot some IPSC matches there and become classified in the province of Alberta. And they could say, you're an A. Well, what am I? I should be the same everywhere. My skills didn't change. What changed was how you grade those skills. It's not good. So some things should be universal, and I feel that this is one of them. And uh, rather than make up your own classification system, the, uh, the sections should be petitioning Ipsic Canada to petition the world body to change the system. So... Anyway, all that to say, um, the match was a lot of fun. I don't think there should be a classification system. Okay, we'll come back to that. Everyone that. else and not have this made up thing that, oh, you won, you're the best of the worst this right. year. Right, now like, we'll come cares? back to that. Yeah, we'll come back to that. So the match was fun. It poured rain. Um, I won uh, production optics and I had the highest score overall. But as Adriel said, that's not a thing, but uh, it's the thing when you're the guy who has the highest score overall. <laughs> Bragging rights. That's all it mm -hmm. is. Okay. So let's talk about the merits of whether or not we should have a classification system. I'm like you, Adriel. You show up, you shoot, and if you win, you win. If you don't, you don't. That's that's the world I live in. That's the that's the way I see it. I'm not about participation awards. So what they've I I get competing with your gender, 
I get competing mm-hmm. with your age group. Okay. Those are like, those are add-ons, right? Like they they do top senior, top lady. Yes. But like those are But then in a big match you're going to have all the senior production guys then divided into the grandmaster senior production, which there probably aren't any. Master senior production, there are for sure. Mm-hmm. And then A, B. So you could win first place C in senior production. And you're compared to all the other senior, which means you're old. You're over 50. Mm-hmm. I don't care. You're old. If you're over 50, you're old. Deal with it. Um, if you're contemplating suicide because you're over 50, call me. We'll talk. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Don't call me. No, what happens if you're contemplating suicide because you're over 50? Uh, I will when I'm over 50. Guaranteed. <laughs> but I'll get through it. Um, yeah, you will. So. I need more if, alcohol. If um, you ruin my train of thought, you lush. <laughs> anyway, yes, Adriel. So it's ridiculous to have all these people group by skill right and so if you're winning first place c you're among the tallest of the midgets right it's like um in in racing right now there's a good analogy here that applies to ipsic now listen kelly everybody goes out and they run laps okay and then they group you into mains for racing based on your speed so the fastest guys get put in the a main and the slowest guys get put in the b main so if you win the b main you're the best of the worst. If you are last in the A main, you're the slowest of the fastest. Like you're the worst of the best. Do you want to be the worst of the best or the best of the worst? I'll take last place in the A main before first place in the Because B you'll main. go up. Right. Because if you're in the first place of the shitty group, you're not going to improve. You, If you're in the last you place of the better might. group, you're you going might. to actually step up. They're going to push you. Is basically. There's actually a system in place where if you win the B main, you mm-hmm. get to bump into the A main because sometimes you end up in the B main because of a crash that's no fault of your own or your car broke. So if you end up winning the B main, you deserve a spot in the A main. And those okay. guys can sometimes move up the chain. But Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'd rather be in the A main fair and square and not have to bump into right. it. So, so shooting is like that too. If you're, um, you know, if you're in the if you're a B class shooter or an A class shooter, I don't know. I'm with Adriel. Just uh, it's I a competition group... of skill. Why group people by skill? That's the whole point of a ranking <sighs> of the match. Yeah, and it'll get rid of sandbagging, right? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot bad so I can win first place and C at nationals, yeah. sure or even, or even all. the thought good. of it. Because I don't, I don't know how many people actually sandbag. I can't, I can't imagine a lot of. There people are people do. that do. There are people that do. Probably not a lot. There are no, I never but the um, douches do though. Sorry, I did sure. say that. Sure, but I, I, I don't know if it's a wor- if, if that's worth tackling as a problem. No, it's um, not. You're right. There's not that many. But there are some. But that said, why even have it as a thing? Like winner right. of C, winner of D because class people's... or C class isn't a thing. Unclassified would be interesting. If you if you got someone who is like a rookie and came in and did really really well, top rookie, that's interesting. Top lady, mm-hmm. top yeah. senior, that's fine. Yeah. Um. I'm, I agree. Get rid of the classes altogether because it's participation awards is what it is. It exists because people want uh, they want recognition. For okay. their efforts, even if they're, I, you know, I do so. understand it. I think that people who are brand new or people who are, are women or whatever, giving them awards, it's kind of like promoting the sport and to continue on. However, yeah, I actually do agree. Everybody wants to be on a level playing field. It is a sport that's a living pl- level playing field. So let's just let's just give people the awards based on where they finish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. I think well we solved I that think, problem. I think Trevor awful was for this. And... Yeah. I think I was. It's really, really bad in RC. There's there's divisions and classifications for like all your different um levels of driver. And one of the so one of the arguments for classification guys is when you go to a match and there are professional shooters there, well, you don't have a chance to win. No, you don't, but that's that's just life. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm sorry Ben Stager showed up too bad for you you know what i mean like 
it puts your ego in check. So they have these classes where it's like, well, I'm never going to beat Ben Stagger and not with that attitude you won't, but I'd still like to know where I stack up against the people that are of my skill level. Well, do you want to compare yourself against other Look mediocre? On the results. Look right? on the results. Say, oh, did I beat Bob this time? I always, I'm always competing with Bob. We're always neck and neck. Did I beat Bob? If you want to know how you did compared to Bob, you can do that or Steve or whoever is in your local club. They're yeah. in the match too, right? Yep. No, the argument is, it's, and I've heard this in archery. When we used to go to archery nationals, we'd have a couple of professional sponsored shooters show up and people would bellyache. How are we going to win if he's here? Practice? Yeah. When he started <laughs> shooting, he never, he never asked that question. He didn't, you know, how are we going to win? It's how much training do I have to do to get to that level, right? How do I get on the podium? They don't worry about who the other people are. They worry about improving themselves. So anyway, all right. So that's what it was. Um, I'm not sure why he wanted to put on a classifier match, but um, I mean, in one sense, it's convenient and easy because you don't need to worry about creativity. All you need to worry about is rangeability. Will this stage fit in that bay? Let's measure it out and let's do it. Boom, done. And while I hate the classification system, I kind of like the idea of a classifier stage to find out how your skills at executing a stage measure up to other people. Yes. That's kind of interesting. Me. The only true measure is the other people that were there that day. Yeah. Unless it's a standard one and you can compare it to well, other people who've shot it. And I mean, you can. You can go to Ipsic World mm -hmm. right now and you can look and see how you compare it to everyone else who shot that. You know, one really cool thing about the USPS, US, USPSA Steel Challenge scoring is the second you input the score in the practice score tablet, it tells you, boom, what you did because it's all based on time. And these are standard stages, again, mm -hmm. measured and built the same all over the world. So the second you shoot Smoke and Hope, it tells you what your total time is, like whether or not you were B, A, whatever. Mm, cool. Yeah. Ego crushing. But I already go into those matches knowing what the world record is on those stages. <laughs> so I already know where I'm at. And if somebody's having a good run, I'll be like, hey, man, you're only four seconds off the world record. And you're like, huh? <laughs> the whole thing was four seconds. <laughs> right? <laughs> so anyway, yeah. that's, that's all I did, guys. And uh, good chat. How about you, Adriel? What did you get up to? Uh, let's see here. I did a maple seed on Saturday. I think it was on Saturday. I'm going to be doing like a yeah, maple seed like every Yeah, it was week. Saturday. Yeah. 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 How's Seems it going? Like so long ago. It was good. Didn't rain on us. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. I think we have uh, now we're uh, we've got yeah, four three... times as many uh, matches. Maple okay, seed, you know uh, what? You've also had and, uh... four times as many ability to open up anything, and because Alberta doesn't give a flying, you know who? Yeah, I think we also but have most active cases uh, now, more more than Ontario. <laughs> yeah, what's no that one, say? No one has more active cases Don't than care. the province of Quebec. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, you guys did a fantastic job. You had three riflemen, and yeah, that's and awesome. Double rainbow all across the sky on the way in. Double rainbows. Yeah, I saw those too. Thanks for sh sharing that picture. I, yeah. I he shared. So Adriel shared a picture of his double rainbow, and I shared a picture of the tornado warnings that we were having. <laughs> we just had some tornado warnings today. <laughs> there you go. There's a, so. there a bit of a twister that uh, we may have yeah. touched down in Calgary here, but yeah. yeah. I didn't seem safe. Oh, yeah. So I shot the maple seed. Uh, not did shot it. Put on the maple seed. You put it on. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then what else am I doing? I am looking at. Okay. So I've got this uh, Narinko NP29. Yep. I kind of want to put a red dot on it. You do. Now, um, Captain Andy, I asked him about, the, about that mount that they put on that thing. That's a $180 US mount. E. Yeah. But it's a baller gun. Belong to a baller individual. But I don't like this is a Narinko, keep in mind. Like, it's not a baller. Well, gun. dude, what I'm do you want? Do you baller. want to have an optic on your 1911? That, you I know, do. nice things cost money. I do. Ah, uh, you know, okay, let me, let me show you what I've been looking at because uh, what have I've you been, been looking at. I've been looking at, like, what do I need to do to, like, make this work? Okay, so I have a Novak cut in on my 1911. Okay. But yes, it was made, it was cut to, like, where the existing rear sight was, which is like a GI style. So it's, it's, further back than uh than it should be uh so i could get like a novak mount that like just slides in there but that rear plate is gonna slide 
quite a bit back past the, the back of the receiver, back of the receiver, slide, back of the slide. Uh, so that might, well, it'll look weird if I, if those I are do dumb getting it. Yeah. They don't uh, stay in and, and no, no. I can make it stay in. Just, no, you can't <laughs> drill another hole and put another bolt in there and it's not going to move. <laughs> Uh, so I was looking at that, uh, like maybe one of these adapter plates here, but I, yeah, it, it might go a little bit too far back. So I'm not sure now, like whether I get a different plate and have Captain Annie mill the plate in, whatever plate works kind of a thing. Um, I have been looking at red dots. Uh, the hollow suns look kind of interesting just for the fact that the battery lasts FYI, like a hundred thousand hours. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you can send the slide to Denise too. Denise done a lot of those, uh, cuts for that mount as well. Oh, I see. Really? Okay. Hmm. Show sponsor. Yeah. Might even cut you a deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, the thing I need is how do I make it happen? Because, uh, the Novak won't work. I need some other plate milled into that thing and i need to get the plate the trigicon plates are stupid expensive they're like 100 us each uh these egw ones are like 50 bucks egw is fine like I, I would take one of those just not the novak one maybe something that mounts directly in and then the hollow suns are three four hundred bucks and i think yeah. that's more in line with the price point the trigicon rmr is very nice but i am not putting a 900 dollars optic on a three hundred dollar Norinco pistol. Well you keep it and you put it on something else later on down the road. Yeah. Maybe. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna Fair enough. I'm not gonna cook that much money on it. I mean I was looking at the vortexes and the vortexes are okay. Um about the same price point uh but the battery life was way worse and they none of them had like uh either an always on or a shake awake or anything like that. Uh yeah. whereas the Hollow Sun I could just leave it on. It's so 50, 50, either 50,000 hours or 100,000 hours of uh, lifetime on it. That's like five or 10 years. So you just leave it on. Because um, the one thing that I always notice with uh, people shooting red dots with three gun is uh, they forget to turn them on. <laughs> they go through their whole, because you got three guns. It's not just like one thing you have to check. You have to load your rifle, check your safety, take your scope caps off, preload your shotgun, put the safety on, then your pistol and this and load it and put it uh uh preload the chamber then pull out your other mag and stuff that mag in there and turn your red dot on so it's a lot to uh it's a lot to remember just i'd rather have a red an optic. dot on well yeah i'd rather have a red dot that just stays on all the time and this one would do that uh better so that's why i was kind of looking at those and they also use the rmr mounting uh plates so those are those are quite easy to find so i have been looking at those uh and then the other thing i've been doing is can I feature pin my video? There we go. Uh, is uh, I got one of these guys to play with. So this is the, uh, come on camera. Here we go. This is the uh, Spectre Ballistics Straight Yeah, pull. I yeah. saw the, I saw that. I refuse to get excited about this. Uh, this is like will. admitting defeat. Sure. We haven't even had mm -hmm. the lawsuit yet and we're already buying straight pull ARs. Okay. Uh, if you have a very fancy AR, what's that AR going to do for the next 10 years while this is dragged through court? Gather dust. <laughs> Nothing. It's going to gather dust. So, Be safe, queen. if you want to do something with those fancy parts over the next 10 years, you get an upper and lower, and you put your parts on it, and you go shoot a coyote with it, or not shoot a, a match not with a bolt. it, or whatever. What's that? What about the bolt? What kind of bolt's in there? Can I use my AR bolt? You could use your AR bolt, uh, and then you have to use the bolt carrier that comes with it, which is a very small dealy that just kind of fits in there. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's the carrier that's been modified. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you could use your... So if you have a matched AR bolt and barrel, that's where all your accuracy is on, a, on an AR anyways. So you mm -hmm. could get a very accurate package set up just by sticking some of those on a setup like this. Yeah. I sold the parts off my AR. There you go. So. That might have been a mistake because you are going to make more money soon because they're, they're going to start getting short on parts. Because there's none, there's none coming in right now. Anyways, uh, straight full action on this thing. Nothing, uh, the, the, no uh, spring assist. So you pull it back, it stays back. You push it forward, it stays forward. Uh, pretty decent in terms of like not shaking out. If you do like really whack it, it will, uh, it will pull the bolt back just a little bit. Uh, but if you just like under normal use, it's not going to come back. Um, 
not much to say about it. I mean, it's a uh, it's an AR ish upper and lower that you bolt all your AR parts to. It's got a trigger guard on it, I guess. That's <laughs> <laughs> so some of the ARs don't, Whoa! right? Yeah, they they have a you have an add on, uh, eight something. I don't know. This is like this. This is serial number one. Like they loaned yeah. me the production model to yeah, because you a did a review, review on it. That's I amazing. Saw that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a good I mean, review too. By the don't way, don't get me wrong. I'd rather take that coyote hunting than anything else. And now barrel length doesn't matter. I can put a 16 on that. I could put a 14 yeah. on that. You could put a 12. I measured this thing out. Right? I, think a, I think a 12 would go. Like I would never use a 12 just because it's not like not practical for a, a 223. Screw practical. Practical's got nothing to do with it. It's a black 16? rifle. 16? 16 inch yeah. I would use. Yeah, hell totally. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, takes AR triggers so you can put in like a fancy pants uh, trigger you know what? in there. Like... I'd have one anyway. What the hell? Now, one thing I wish they had done, mm -hmm. and that was not make it take an air mag, come up with a proprietary mag, and give us 30 round capacity. I'm pretty sure both Maple Ridge and, like this is the Spectre Ballistics, I'm pretty sure Maple and Spectre are both doing that. Good. Yeah. Like this is I'll the, fir the first, Ryan, the first version Ryan said that there was going to be proprietary mag for it. Yeah. Because no. yeah. that's a big fat F U, right? It's like, yep. all right, fine. You took our semi autos away. Well, guess what? Now we got a straight pull black rifle with full capacity. How do you like us now? And it would be competitive in three gun because right now in three gun, a Tavor or, or some other semi auto is still going to be more competitive than this because like you can't until he's got a reload. Yeah, until he's got a reload. So if he can get a thirty rounder, that would be uh, that would be ideal. Uh, I mean, because three gun is is unorganized, a hack, and doesn't matter. I would totally do that. <laughs> like if it was a serious sport, you, like Ipsic, you're just no, jealous. But, you're are just you jealous because really, you don't jealous have of really what? Your made up sport where the rules Ipsic's change from one match too. to the other. Like if you guys were all running USPSA multi gun across the country, like you should, an organized, established rule set. Fine, but you know, you guys got to make up your own rule sets mm -hmm. at every match. Indeed. Yeah, that's the yeah. case. Oh, yeah. yeah. You own it like it's a good thing, which makes mm -hmm. you special and a little autistic. <laughs> or it makes our matches fun. Okay. Uh, okay. Fun so, matters. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me show this bolt here. So there's a, you guys see that key on the, on the one side here, right about there? Yes. That, yeah. So you, there, there's a, a key on one side, bolt on the other. The bolt is the key on the other side. So, uh remove that and then it's the bolt. reversible right that's what you're doing yes yeah it's reversible perfect i'm it not actually going to reverse it because uh it it does belong on the left side in it my does. opinion yeah i don't think if that the bolt, uh it, yeah if it's bolt it, yeah, no, it, it keep does your, yeah man side. keep like, your finger on the trigger yeah rock yeah. the bolt and you can like i tried uh, at the range <laughs> shooting it with just keeping my left hand on the bolt and just running it really quickly it worked uh -huh. it was fine perfect. it wasn't like I would say for uh, for like long range shots, you would probably work the bolt and then pull your hand back out or pull your hand, your support hand out to uh, uh, grab whatever you could to uh, to give you a little bit more support. But uh, so when I was looking at the video, you did it pretty proficiently. Uh, what's the uh, what's the rate? Were you able to time between shots? How much you realistically no. were taking? No, I wasn't able to no. uh, to time. No. So. Pins are loose. Got to do a mad minute with it. Yeah. Mm. This front one's a little bit sticky. There we go. So there's the upper. That's what she said. And that cool. bolt, there's nothing holding it in right now. Oh, you know what? There is. I need to pull it back. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. That's a, light, that's a little It's tiny a tiny box. little guy. Yeah. Nice yeah. and small. That's and then that's it. Said. There's uh, There's nothing else going on in the interior. Doesn't go to the back. That's solid right there. And your what? lower lower is just like, I don't know, chunk of aluminum it, to put your trigger and stuff into. Yeah. Adriel, is there a buffer and spring on that in that tube? Nope. No? Nope. nope. No buffer and spring. Just makes it lightweight. Well, I want one that I pull and then let go in the spring chambers the next round for me. The Maple Ridge does that one. Perfect. Yeah. But you... I don't know. I mean, like, th th there's pros and cons, I guess, to that. Then I, the and isn't there a system in Europe where you pull the trigger, the gas puts it back, but it locks open, then you push yes. a button and it close? Can we have yeah. that? I mean, I think this comes down to 
do you think the liberals are going to ban more guns or not? If you think well, they're going to ban, they are. if you think they're going to ban more guns, then m- maybe you want to pick something that's a little bit further away from them banning. Man. If you think they're going, to, if you don't care, then so pick, go back and buy the, the Rossi that you one. were talking about because that's the, the furthest that you can get, right? Well, I mean, I think that's up to individuals in terms of how <laughs> far they want to get on it. Like myself, um, I would pick the thing that's the most competitive. Um, but that said, I still have. Uh, I still have all my uh, um, three gunning to do, so I want the most competitive uh, rifle out there, right? Um, yeah. Anyways, got out shot that. Um, I was just using like some blaster ammo. I got like half inch groups at uh, at fifty. That's the barrel, though, right? Like any any good barrel you put on an AR action is going to going to give you decent accuracy. And uh, I think that's about it for me. Kelly, what about you? So I did do a little bit of stuff this week. I went to a maple seed at Warren Fields, which is actually near London. And it is an active airfield. So we actually shot, uh, first time ever for a maple seed event, we had a plane came down the airstrip. And it's kind of like, you know how when you're here playing um, hockey out on the street and you say car well we went airplane and had to clear everything out and when the airplane taxied past us uh, game on so we went back to actually shooting so it was kind of cool um, it's probably one of the most coolest ranges that I've ever seen because not only do they have isn't an active airfield but they also have a wood oven for pizza anyways next time I know I'm gonna bring pizza and we're gonna have uh, homemade pizza in the wood oven uh, we had four people who were um, uh, congratulations to four people who made rifle, riflemen. They're all listeners as well. So oh, there was cool. Nat, Dave, Steve, and Adrian. And then we had uh, a couple other people that came up afterwards as well. Doug Johnson, he was a listener. Uh, Rob was a listener. I gave out shirts to everybody and swag and all that. So it was really nice to see everybody and say hello. Uh, and Chris, uh, Chris Titchler, he was the one that uh, put on the event or hosted the event. He actually had a whole weekend. So we had uh, race guns on Friday. And then he had an outlaw match on Saturday. And then we had a maple seed on the Sunday. So it was a really long week for him. Weekend for him. And it was really warm the the two days previous. Like it was in the 35s and sunny and and not. And they were out in the sun. And then on Sunday, what had happened was Sunday. Well, it's maple seed for, so you know what it means. The day started out really, really nice. Uh, Then by about 10 o'clock in the morning, we had the thunder and lightning happening and then the downpour. And then we stopped for about an hour while that passed. And then we got back to shooting. And uh, then by about two o'clock, we had more thunder and lightning and also the tornadoes. Anyways, so we uh, didn't shoot our first MQT until about five o'clock. MQT is, by the way, the Maple Seed Qualifying uh, target we had I, I was your boss i was going to call the event but everybody wanted to stay and actually try so i said well if we're we're not going to be shooting by five o'clock i'll call and we'll cancel it um but by five o'clock miraculously the sun came out and everything and people stayed and we shot two more mqts we were there until eight o'clock i wanted to say thank you to every single person every single person that was on that line stayed and helped clean up and pack up and wow yeah so that was fantastic and everything in that trailer was soaking freaking wet i got home at one o'clock in the morning and then i um i didn't drop off the trailer so i got home at one o'clock in the morning and then i actually went to work at seven o'clock in the morning i got off work and then i went back out and i unpacked everything out of the trailer and i dried everything out and folded it all back up after two hours and put it back in the trailer so that we're ready for another maple seed this weekend and that's what happens maple seeds happen it rains so it's kind of like you know we have to wash everything and then pack it all back up again and, and everything. in my experience but- it doesn't rain Shut up. Fine. It's <laughs> sun shines. A little bit of wind just to drive the mosquitoes away. And uh, keep it a little bit cool. Yeah, 22. Yeah, ish. whatever. Anyways, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Or maybe it's, we'll see this weekend. That gray I'm cloud in- that follows you, Kelly. I've been telling you for a long time. but. Um. And I got to see uh, Rick. So Rick Antonio, he uh, he stayed for half of the shoot because he was there all weekend to do the uh, ORPS and the race guns too. So he stayed, but he has a little bit longer drive. So he stayed for half the day. And it was so good to actually see him. I've seen him more now in the past 
couple of weeks than I've seen them all last year. Anyways, I it think was really, that really... Uh, Rimfire Race Guns is going to become a lot more popular because like, oh, yeah. so many guys from our three gun group are just like, they, oh, there's yeah. no rifles. They're, yeah. they, they, they might as well just go to Rimfire. Yeah. Well, you know, Ipsic does have a discipline called Mini Rifle. Mm -hmm. So that may take off in Canada because it's essentially Ipsic Rifle, but with Rimfire. You can yeah. find the rule book on their website. Yeah. Everybody's having fun with that. It's like, oh yeah, like fantastic. Anyways, and so they were doing 22 rifles, but you can also do the race guns with 22 pistols as well, but they were just doing, um, and uh, not only that, Rick had brought out some of the rifles that he's uh, giving away too with, uh, I'm going to announce it a little bit later, but People got to try some really, really, really cool rifles too. So it was awesome. Uh, also, just want to let you know that the Ontario Hunter Education Program, I told you that it was coming out last week and that it was being released online and doing everybody does, does it virtually. So I'm officially through chapter 11 of 18 of it. And so what they did is Ontario basically hijacked this Saskatchewan one. And so I'm doing Saskatchewan's Hunter Education and once I'm done that, then I'm going to contact the person here and I'm going to write the exam for it. But it is essentially... You can't write about, it online? Yeah, you do it online, but I don't know how it's supposed to be done. I have to do it through him. He's proctoring it. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to contact him. But Alberta, I'm, you can just do it online. The whole thing, front to back. My kid, my kid did it and... Uh, you watch all the materials, yep. you do the test at from the comfort of your own home, yep. and your license comes in the mail. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to contact him. He said, contact me once you're done, and then I'll get you to do the exam. I said, okay. Right. Uh, so as I said, it's about each of the chapters is about anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. So that's like two hours times old. That's 22 hours. I'm not getting back in my life. Anyways. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning how to keep things alive. You're learning how to kill them. Wow. Have things ever changed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no way. Did you ever think this day would end? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it ends with suicide. <laughs> started with suicide. That's Come, the right. and then started it, with suicide. And... Ended with a conversation with Kelly. <laughs> Anyways, I love worst. you. Uh, okay. Skeet. I also went to Skeet Night on Wednesday. Shot and some skeets. I saw I shot some clays on Wednesday, like we normally do. Uh, yeah, so much better than last week. I beat Kelly this week, which is unusual. I don't usually beat her. Um, but I also noticed some things with my shooting as well. So I, yeah, I'm. Uh, you noticed how bad it was. Trevor? Sorry, filter's uh, off, man. It's the end of the day. My Ritalin's worn off. Out. These are the things that are going to come out. It is actually, but no, it's not. It's actually improving. So thank you. Good for you. And uh -huh. you beat Kelly. And I beat Kelly. Yeah, I and did. Kelly can get after it. So yeah. So can the other Kelly. Uh, the Delast. So I've been waiting and waiting for the Delast mag to come in the mail. And I haven't checked my mail for about a week, but it came in. And, and I told my dad that it's here. So I'm going to install it for him. But oh, I just cool. want to show everybody. I, uh, this first time I've seen one of these, these ones are pretty solid. They're uh, um, machined aluminum and the uh bolt button extended extended it, bolt grabber yeah thing. and it is serrated and Whoa. it is it's actually chunky. it's chunky so you're not going to have to fiddle and fart with that of course this goes over the trigger guard like this and uh i think it's actually a little bit better than the one that i have it's got the last printed on it and i think it um I think it'll do him nicely. Now, we were talking to Matador Arms. Matador Arms uh, is saying that they don't have, it, have any of their 1022s extend megs here in Canada. They have them down in the States. A lot of the listeners have been tagging me in posts on Twitter as well as sending private messages. Um, I did talk to Anika or um, Nolan, who whoever's managing the Twitter page, and they said that, no, they're not available here in Canada. It's only in the U.S. that they're available. So just want to let everybody know that. Um, the other thing is I'm prepping for the maple seed that's going to be happening in Ottawa. Uh, all of our maple seeds, as soon as we get them up online, they're tech, they're basically selling out. I'm not even having, I'm not even releasing some of them to the, um, 
uh, to the public. I'm talking about the Ontario one. So we're trying to actually get a few more here in Ontario and as they come up and get released to the public, uh, we'll be putting them on the website and also on the Facebook page. But if they are sold out, please stay tuned. We're trying to get as many as we can. And if not this year, we'll, we'll get you in next year. COVID's been kind of a B-I-T-C-H for us. Uh, Gunny Girl Calendar, we got some uh, we got some great models. All of them have confirmed that they're going to be participating and we're going to, we're planning our shoot at the end of August and yeah, it's going to be a great time. A bunch of us girls getting together. We're all going to sleep over, have a pillow bites, you know, that thing. And uh, Oh yeah. my. <laughs> and that's it. That's all that I did for uh, Congratulations on being able to regain my attention. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you're listening. Didn't take much, hey? Yeah, no. <laughs> no it didn't take much. It's the right thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Teddies and pillow fights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I signed up for a th uh, three gun match, my first three gun match of the year. You did? Yeah. Of course you I'm did. Gonna, I'm going to do a three gun match on August 8th, and I'm going to do a maple seed August 9th. I'm going to be. Oh, you're going to be baked. Uh, That's what you are. Yeah. August. <laughs> going to be hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Why don't we head on? Uh, okay. new sponsor Telos Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the firearms vertical. They help with business processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. Learn more at telosalpha.com. Upcoming events. Uh, there's an Ipsic Newfoundland one here. Oh yeah. Their provincials is coming. That's coming up yes, quick here. They are coming up and I put it into the yeah, so I think the, they reached out to me to see if they can get t shirts again and I think I might put a couple in the mail for them. Huh. Yeah, not Sean's the not the ones we can find. They're the, not the ones yeah. that we want for everyone else. We've we were we're hard up on finding like the, the bigger t shirts, the two XLs and that kind of thing. We're all out yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Sean's reaching out for that, but if anybody else can sponsor them or if anybody wants to participate. He's got the um, link there for that. So it's on practice score. Yep. So you can go to practice score and just search for matches and, and uh, either Newfoundland or you can use the map function and get yourself registered. Do we know if it's a level two or a level three? Um, I'm thinking it's probably a level two. Do they do level threes? Um, they do if they can get a range master. They don't have any over there that are trained yet, to the best of my knowledge. I'm not sure if that has changed. I don't think so. So. I don't think they're, they're letting anybody on the rock either. So. Man, it looks like it'll be a two. Yep. Oh. So, Sean can let us know if it's level three or two. Yeah. I'm gonna say it's two because, as you said, they're not letting anybody in. So. Right. Awesome. CRPS. They're still doing their founders coin fundraising. Uh, they're giving away. Can I do this? Do you want to do it, Kelly? Am I, no, am I I'm missing holding anything? Up. No, I'm holding uh, up. You're holding one. Yes, yes. Uh, they are uh, giving away one of two rifles. Uh, they have a Tezro.ca CZ457 LRP. That's the long range precision 22. It's beautiful. All, it's got all the goodies on there. They also have a Go Big Tactical Voodoo K22 KRG Bravo with a trigger tech. Uh, $50 for a coin with two chances to win a great rifle. Head on over to rimfireprecision.ca and check it out over there. Only $50 and you get some really good prizes. And the coins can... are sweet too. Like they're yeah, they like are. thick, chunky metal pieces. So kind of, kind of a cool little uh, little swag bit. Will it draw blood if I throw it at your forehead? Asking Definitely. for a friend. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. If you put it in your front pocket and you're walking up a slight incline, might blow out your calf too. Oh, might. that's might. very hurtful. Not as hurtful as blowing out a calf, but you know. Uh, Project Maple Seed events. Uh, we have events. Uh, Winnipeg, yep. August. Sorry, do you want to go ahead? No, go ahead. No. Winnipeg, August 4th. Verdun, August 6th. Medicine Hat, August 8th. Sherwood Park, August 9th. That's Sass members only, right? Huh? Yes. That's members only. Yeah, okay. Sherwood Park one is. I, still, I think they still have space. So if you're a member of the Sherwood Park range, check that out. Saskatoon, August 11th and 12th. Tabor, August 18th. Provost, August 22nd. Campbell River, August 23rd. Kamloops, uh, uh, August 29th. I think we're almost up to the point where we can, yes, today actually, we can announce uh, some of the Calgary shoots as well. So 
We'll be adding okay. some uh, uh, some events for Calgary shortly. Yep. If you want to get those, go to mapleseedrifle.com or go to the Maple Seed Facebook page. Yep. We're going to be updating those uh, probably in the next couple of days because I got some more to add to it as well with Ontario. Because so, we're we'll get those coming. Try to too. catch up to Alberta. I don't think you're going to do it, but you can try. You know what? <laughs> as soon as this cold and the you know the snow comes to Alberta, Ontario is still going to be shooting because we're we're hardy folk here. Are you going to shoot past November? Mm, no, probably I'm not. Sh I'm shooting into October. You know what? That's risky. We That's might. very risky. We might. And the reason is because if we're doing more regionally stuff that and that, we can probably do it. And you know what? I'm starting to think that it'd be a great idea to have winter seeds. Yeah. They can't really do those out here because it might be like too cold Why? to the function. Because because you because you're cold. I believe that. <laughs> um, <Swipe> words. <laughs> I know you're telling me more time. What were you saying, Trevor? I was just going to point out the fact that uh, I think it's it's uh, expected. Yeah, it is. That you would think it's a good idea to have a winter seed. <laughs> I think it's par for the course and uh, continues to speak volumes to your poor judgment. <laughs> well, I mean, I also I also ran a December three gun match, so exactly. Uh, yeah, you know, why do you like being miserable? You come back here for punishment week after hey, week. Hey, Trevor! Now you want to go teach in the snow? Mm -hmm. you get cold, get frostbite. Trevor, I, I yes. live in the environment I live in. I'm yeah, but you want to go play it. in it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're dressed warm and on a snowmobile, screw or or skis. Oh my God, Trevor, do you, re so do you remember uh, planning a winter seed event around your schedule in February? And then not showing up? Yeah, I do, because I was like, this is dumb. I'm staying home. Who wants to go yeah. shoot the gold? Well, I did. Yeah, I you earned, were awesome. I were in my winter seed patch, too. I'm and happy for you. I my ass off. Uh huh. And, then, but, and, and yet, still, you want to have more. Yeah, because it's cool. It's cool, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cool it's cold oh man what's the temperature cutoff to get your winter sheet patch like how cold has it got to be it's supposed to be freezing which is so zero zero, Just zero or but below? I, th I think that you know what in canada we have to up top game a little bit maybe minus 10 what's wrong with you you're not right in the head first maple seed that i shot we were minus 25 with wind chill factor of another 10 degrees Ugh. i froze my ass off Ugh. see that's hard to do yeah. That's hard to do with like lane. And I can't shoot with gloves. So mm. I prep the mag, go mm -hmm. shoot, put the gloves back on. I'll never need to shoot that bad. <laughs> doable. Doable. It's doable. There's yeah. a lot of things are doable that are not required. Mm -hmm. Nothing's okay. really required. True Anyways, story. News. Uh, CCFR saved the date September 12th. Is this for like a. Uh, protest an annou announcement so, on August 4th, 4th and the date is September 12th. Yes, yeah, I, I suspect that's what it is. I think they're finally going to organize a march on parliament. Hmm. Uh -huh. Cool, the total so, speculation. I have no insider knowledge here whatsoever. I used to be a director, I don't talk to nobody about nothing anymore. I don't know nothing about nothing. So, save the date. I'm going to be there. Uh, the other Kelly is going to be there, Tracy. Everybody's going to be there. So, uh, come out. It's going to be in Ottawa. Save the date, September 12th. I'm not even booking a maple seat on that day. So, just letting you know. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will be here in Alberta. If you guys want us to march somewhere around here, I can. I can handle that. Is it 12th or 19th? I think it's. Uh, a couple, uh, couple new donations. Yeah, yeah, a couple new donations to the uh, CCFR Legal Fund, Thunder Bay yeah. District Fish and Game has donated a thousand dollars, and Seniac Gun Club has donated a thousand dollars as well. Yay! Uh, yeah. There was also another donation that was done. Uh, so Connor Ware, they attended a shoot at the Drum Haller District and um, Sports is it Shooters Club. Or? DTS, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, so for a charity shoot, and they raised over six hundred dollars for that for the CCFR. Oh, so. are you talking about the one that uh, Jason sent in? Yep. I think that was on private land. I don't think that was at the Drum Heller one. Oh, I was messaging him as you guys were talking, so he said it was Drummaller. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That looked, looked kind of neat. 
well uh, done event. Yeah, so um, congratulations and thanks for doing that. And just to give you, uh, yeah, September 12th. It's yeah. a good thing I checked on that. Yeah. Next up in the news, we have the RCMP's not a registration certificate revocation letter. So uh, this is actually something that uh, Wolverine shared on CGN. And they're saying, hey, they didn't actually say revoked in their, their oh, letter. So. They said nullified. Therefore, they're trying to get around you not filing a Section 74 challenge on because I'm sure you guys have gotten your little pieces of paper in the mail that say, hey, your registration is now null and void. So that's that's the theory here as well, is that uh, they're trying to uh, make those not applicable. And there's oh. also a little bit of uh, uh, interesting history here in uh, uh, their Section 74 hearings for the 12.6 handguns 18 years ago and how those went, which not well. They didn't, they didn't go well. Anywho, I don't know. Are, are any of you guys planning on filing a Section 74? I was. So one of the questions is, I, I have it down in the listener feedback. Um, mm -hmm. William Sanders was watch or Saunders, he was asking and what, what our thoughts are on receiving those, um, really receiving the RCMP letters of the revocation, certificate revocation. And if uh, the 74, um, Section 74 is if we're going to be doing it and if he should mm -hmm. be or not. The NFA, their position is to file it on anything that's not specifically listed on the OIC. Um, of and course it is. Of course. Um, but not on anything that's an AR-15 that was originally listed because that could basically be precedent. Um, but overall, people are looking to say, should I, should I not? There's uh, and people I, that put out, like there's a CCFR video yes, that got put out. Yes, there's yeah. I think before anyone makes a decision, they need to go listen to Rod's video. Yep. And um, that will help you make a more informed decision. After listening to Rod's decision or Rod's video, um, I will not be filing a 74. Okay. You do you. That's yep. where I'm at. Everybody has. That's kind of what Rob said. Rod said too. He said, yeah. "You do you." All, all you guys you, do, you do, do, you do. You, you do. have the right to file if you want to file. However, yeah, of course, yeah. and I'm not going to um, speak ill or begrudge anyone who does file um, for whatever their reasons are. They're their own personal reasons, and I can't be critical of those. But after watching Rod's video, it's not something that I am comfortable doing because I think there are actually um, bigger issues at play here. So I will let, uh, I mean, other people are going to file anyway, so I don't have to. And this is going to eventually play out in court. But if what Rod says is true, and then, I mean, it is, it's, it's happening. Uh, no spoilers. Go watch the video. Um, I don't want to contribute to it, so I'm not going to file. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think, um, I hope some people file. I hope enough people file. Uh, to make a difference because um, I still would like to see that. Um, and I hope that those people have some ability to pay for <laughs> the legal costs that are around it or are uh, well-versed enough in it themselves to, uh, to run their own defense and, and, uh, and try to challenge it because I still think it's important for regular civilians to, uh, to defend themselves and to take this to court as well, as well as the, uh, the big gorgs. And I think, um, part of what Rod was saying as well is that he didn't want the CCFR or like um, aiding this kind of thing, this mass mm -hmm. section 74 filing. And I think uh, that's one of the other things that I heard in that video as well. Yeah. Have a look at it. Make yeah. a decision. It's your right. Absolutely. It's your right to sort of file, uh, file it if you want. Uh, it's per province as well. There's specific um, forms that you have for, the province so mm -hmm. Ontario is different than Alberta. I've actually downloaded the form. I have to make a decision whether I want to do it or not. But anyways, I'm make still sure on the you... fence for myself. I don't. I don't no. know how that would go in, in Alberta. Um, I... Yeah. 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 Still got a little bit of time. Just got issue. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even have it in the mail yet. Uh, no. I, I'm 
I'm I'm surprised I don't, but I don't have it yet. So, and it's mysteriously arriving on the date that it's dated for. I don't know how that works. Hmm. Magic, liberal magic, Kelly. I don't know. I'm figuring mine's going to be a little later because I'm like a W, I guess. I don't know. Down the list. Yeah, they well, they came out pretty quick for everyone. I but, know. Yeah. Do you know that's another what? Two point five four million right. dollars to send dollars. those yep. out. Yeah. So that so far, that's eleven million dollars they sent in paperwork. Just saying. Yep. I don't Plus, think they care. Uh, nope. They no. do not. I don't think no. their voters care either. Your voters, like, after this we scandal here, no change in polls. No change. Don't care. They're willing to overlook the uh, obvious corruption. So we'll just have to wait. We'll just have to wait until Trudeau does something really bad. Maybe he'll, like, murder someone. You can always hope. Uh, why don't we skip into the main topic? So one of the, uh, uh, one of the listeners sent us... Uh, uh, a question on ammo, when to buy cheap and, uh, and when to pay more. So uh, this is kind of interesting because there's, uh, uh, I think there's some kinds of guns or some kind of ammo, I guess, that cheap is fine. And then sometimes when, uh, when paying more really does make a difference. Um, I haven't thought about uh, how to categorize this, but why don't we start with, uh, do you guys want to start with 22s? Sure. <laughs> okay. So for a maple seed, for a maple seed, All would, right, you, would you would you use the cheapest ammo possible for a maple okay. seed? No. I and the reason use... Go ahead, Kelly, sorry. And the reason is because people will say, okay, I have people who've uh, come to an event and they've come with a bucket of bullets. Mm -hmm. And um they've done okay. One um but one, there's a lot of stoppage. There's a lot of stove piping duds. Uh, they're not uh, reliable, and also it's dirtier the, ammo. Like some some of the dirtier. cheaper Winchester stuff is dirtier, and it's right. going to jam later on in the day. and the groupings are not going to be there. So absolutely no, I wouldn't do it. The, the, the question, the answer to the question, when to buy cheap ammo is when it doesn't matter. You're taking someone to the range to fire a yeah. gun for the first time, and, that and you don't want to use your match ammo or your expensive ammo. That's when you you know, you we need to go purchase ammo just for this little range trip. We're going to buy the cheapest stuff possible. That's when you buy cheap ammo. Like when it doesn't matter. Yeah, Anytime you're, you're right. Line for some kind of competition that goes without saying that, you know. Right. Um, one odd thing that has happened to me was um, my Thompson Center vent. My Thompson Center Predator vent. Right. Holy Jesus, I'm tired. My Thompson Center Venture Predator liked cheap winchester white box 45 really? grain jacketed hollow point i've loaded for this firearm i've tested a wide variety of commercially available ammo and i could shoot sub moa more often than not all the way to 200 with that ammo just lucky that mm -hmm. that powder and projectile combination in that barrel loved each other but i mean not before I went through all the expensive store-bought ammo. Because when I first purchased that rifle, I was not reloading. So, But yeah, when do you buy cheap ammo? When it doesn't matter. When it's plinking, uh, when it's fun. It's I rain. use cheap ammo when it matters, sometimes. Yeah, but you don't care about nothing ever uh, well, no, for, at all. So three-gun. Three-gun pistol drink cheap ammo. Beer. You drink Nine, cheap beer. Uh -huh. You drive 10-year-old cars, even though you don't have to. See what I'm saying? Like, you're just, that's who you are. It's part of your eclectic I got a new car, too. Reality. I, I didn't say I now you do, but for years you could have had a new car. You chose not to. Just you're just weird like that. Correct, but right. I don't need it. So for like so uh, pistol ammo, pistol ammo for three gun, I buy <laughs> whatever is the cheapest nine millimeter sure, possible because it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it does. I need it to be reliable, but uh, cheap nine true. millimeters that's reliable. True. We bought some cheap ammo one time that we were going to use for demonstrations during a class thinking it doesn't matter. It mattered. Max <laughs> it tech. Mattered. Yeah. The max max tech. tech ammo. Yeah. There is such a thing as too cheap for nine millimeter ammo. Right. I also, I wouldn't get the, uh, what's well, the see, Brazilian stuff? We is it the Brazilian sure stuff? That's, that's stuff. really bad too. That like, if you look at the cheapest nine millimeters, that there's that max tech stuff, which all is Brazilians not good. incorrectly are bad. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the max tech is Bosnian. But then there's also some Brazilian stuff that uh, 
that is inconsistent as well. But other than that, like I got federal aluminum case, nine millimeter. I just run that stuff. It's fine. It runs and it's cheap yeah. and uh, I don't have to worry about it. So, um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And absolutely. And Trevor's right too. You buy the crappy stuff when you can take people to the range, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, but you buy the good stuff when you want reliability, consistency or whatever your gun likes. But I think what, um, Josh sent this in and what he was, what he, I think what he's asking is, mm -hmm. um, like he can buy a five cent, um, 22 or he can buy a $5 box or $10 sure. box. You know, a box can buy some Ely. Yeah, sure. Right. 20. So some center X. which should you buy is basically what he's saying. What is the better buy? Is it the the five cent 22 that you can buy in bulk or is it the ten dollar box of ely that is stanky i think it, it depends it on the, the on your skill level too because yeah. let, let's 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 take a maple seed right average yep. person shooting a maple seed high velocity regular blaster ammo is fine as long as long as it's reliable not the dirtiest stuff so i know luke really likes uh thunderbolts that stuff's yeah. dirty and after 200 rounds it's going to start gumming up your action and you might run, run into reliability issues so i like cleaner stuff um and you can get you can like you can get bench accurate stuff like cci standard velocity for seven yeah. cents right. a round yeah cci uh, standard velocity is 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 a gem yeah, yeah for so. what you pay what you get the value is outstanding yeah it is yeah. Trevor's and right again it's bench accuracy is more than what you need at a maple seed. Like there's some other uh, yeah. bulk ammo that uh, their bench accuracy isn't quite very good. And if, and you could outshoot that ammo, you're probably not going to shoot outshoot the CCI standard velocity stuff. No. Um, so, and it's, it's yeah. basically the same seven cents versus five, as long as you buy it by like the bucket load. Right. And um, that's actually, so if somebody writes to me and says, okay, so what do you recommend? I tell them to go and actually shoot the rifle buy a couple of different boxes of mm -hmm. uh, several different kinds and find out what the rifle likes. However, if they're looking for reliability, cheapness, and something that's clean and, and it's going to be accurate, it's CCI mini mags, just go and buy those. Yeah. Mini mags are, are the, when you need the reliability, the mini mags are definitely yeah. really good, especially yeah. in uh, like 22 handguns and that kind of thing. They're, yeah. they're good for that. Yeah. Um, Blazer is good too. CCI Blazer that 22. Yeah. That stuff's good if you need like a high velocity loading. Yeah. Um, and all, all of those, I think, like for maple seed wise, you're not going to outshoot them. If you're going to shoot a CRPS, um, that's where you might start to see some of the difference. Oh, yeah. And that's where we get into the whole thing with uh, velocity as well standard yeah. velocity, high velocity, et cetera. Because you're going to use standard velocity when you go out to the longer ranges as well, and that's where. Uh, well, Rick, Rick uses like high velocity on some of that stuff. Like some of those guys are using high velocity to, really? to go out further. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're not losing. No. no. They're not dropping. Okay. No. So I had better groupings with standard as opposed to the high, which is actually pretty consistent with other people too. Mm -hmm. Test that but on Friday. I, uh, but I use Ely. Like when I'm shooting out to two, three hundred, I'll be using I use Ely as Which opposed Ely? to uh, so um, force. So force, as a yeah. force yeah. is high velocity though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, so, that's what I used for RPS last year. But oh, you yeah, guys got me convinced to go back to standard. I was using well, RPS is is you're inside the the bullet drops going to be less important, less important. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, I mean, especially like I'll yeah. have my dope turret and and accuracy because some of the targets on RPS are what like a half an inch. <laughs> Quarter of an inch, twenty-five. Quarter of an inch. You're gonna need like that's that's where Perhaps. the accuracy is gonna trump the the velocity. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, green box as well. What's green box? It's um. CCI green box or green no, tag? No, Ely. It's the so I've shot club? force. Is that club? Target. Is it target? Uh, Maybe. Secret. They have they have a lot of enemies. Yeah, enemies. Um. But yeah. Use that stuff as opposed to some of, yeah. Use good stuff on the longer distance. I'm just saying. Yeah. If I'm shooting gophers, I like to use cheap copper plated stuff, just cause it's, because it's uh, less lead on your on your hands from from loading all day. Yeah. Uh, and not the cheapest, the absolute cheapest, cause the absolute cheapest okay. would be like Winchester bulk box or Federal uh, bulk box, and uh, those both suck. I don't like either of them. The Federal Blue used to be my favorite, but I don't know what oh, they've I done recently. That was awful. 
recently, like the, the stuff I've shot, like I've been getting terrible groups out of it. And it's mm. like, nope, this goes into the safe, never to be shot again unless I take people out. If I take people, like my kids out to the range, it's like <laughs> I shovel all the real terrible stuff I found. See, all the stuff that's just saying. group for, for, for nothing. Yeah, they can shoot all that. Sport. Uh, Ely Sport is what it is. Sorry. Ah, uh, Sport should be standard velocity. Yeah, it's standard. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's also asking about nine millimeter as well, two two three. Yeah, uh, I go with cheap. I mean, if you're going to shoot Ipsic, um, the best thing to do would be to reload because then you can tailor the power factor to your gun. Correct. But if you were lazy, just run factory one twenty four grain stuff. I guess. Yeah, like if you don't care, just get something that, if you don't reload, get something that runs reliably and call it good and focus on how to shoot, not what you're shooting. But don't right. take the one, like the 115s will be close on power factor. Never buy thing. 115. Yeah, right. 124 or 147 if you can. Correct. Yeah. So one of the, I think one of the reasons why he's asking this is he also sent in another email previously about mm -hmm. how uh, ammo shortages are predicted uh, or being predicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, okay. Um, so Again, you, so this is his next question is when to buy now? Is it better to buy cheap? Is it which to buy? How to buy? Buy bulk, bulk. and buy often and buy when you find it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if, if, if you're like, if, if I was to say, if, if I thought that there was a shortage coming up and I had no nine millimeter right now, oh, I would God, get an yeah. Excel, I would make an Excel spreadsheet yeah. and I would start going through websites and figuring out the price per okay. round and find Can the cheapest Can you do that and way. then publicize it for our listeners, please? That would be I've a done this in the past. Great public yeah, service. Has. Yeah. Needs so, to be done again. So you know what I did? So, and again, I love our listeners and also our co-hosts because they've been sending me uh, messages with, uh, because me. I've been, uh, sorry about yeah. those pictures. Okay. So there's, Co-hosts that I love and co-hosts that I don't love. <laughs> I was drunk. I was drunk when I sent those pictures. Sorry. I didn't mean it. They weren't so, even of him. You could tell by the color. Yeah. Uh, so people have been, uh, I've been having a hard time finding the Gila that I like, the high velocity, right? Yeah. So we have people that have been sending me messages. So I found this really, really, it's better really if they good sent you the ammo, but whatever. Deal. But it was in another province. So I said, sweet. I went and looked. Ship it. Yeah, they won't. It's no, of course up. not. And it's one, it's pickup only, right? So I ordered every single one they have, right? And I put the order through and I said I had, and in the order I said, it's getting picked up. Here's my pal. Here's a copy of it. I have somebody who's coming to pick it up. I am coming down to that province next month. I will pick it up. And they said no. Why did you like talk yourself out of it? Why don't you just send the person the money? They walk in with their own pal and get it. No, because I had to put my pal in, right, when I was ordering it and show Make my the purchase pal. purchase online? Oh, my God. Wow. And then, I, and then I said, well, and it's in-store pickup only. You had to yeah. show your pal, right? And I'm going, well, I have somebody that lives in that province that's picking it up for me because I'm coming they down said, no. there. They wouldn't have figured they, that out. Wow. See, the difference no, right now they, between you and me did. is I'd be calling them out. And they, they, And I got a sweet deal. I bought every single box of it. Mm. Anyways, so I had to cancel the order, and if I come down to the province that I'm supposed to be coming down to next month, if they open up the borders and then let me in, I'll go by the place and I'll buy every single piece of stinking stuff that they have, and because it's that good of a deal. Huh. Anyways, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> uh, well, Kelly, can't you just use the other person's pal on the order, and then they'll go there and pick it up with the pal that you used? I don't know. I'm There's just thinking. Yeah, yeah, I know. And now I'm just, I, you know. Because it's going to be gone. You know what? I don't know if it will be. Like, I don't think like, it will 22 be. is not short right now. There's lots of 22 right now. Wait. 9 millimeter, 223, definitely. No. Wait. All okay. the hoarding no, 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 that no, happened no, no, in the no, States no, 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 and no. people not working? Yeah, but that brand and that specific type of Aguila, it will, like, that's, there's not a lot of it in Canada because Aguila has been having issues, right? So I want it, but I'm not willing. It's kind of like. Whatever. So just here, just your friend who's going to pick it up, send them an EMT and have them process the order themselves or go into the store themselves. Like this should have been done yesterday. I know. He offered and I said, I don't really, uh, I don't really <laughs> care now. Like, honestly, you tell me that I'm going to say, well, you know what? Screw you. I don't really, if it's there, it's there. Yeah. So you don't yep. want it. I do want it, but then buy it. It 
pissed me off. So I don't know. Then don't buy it. Are you pissed <laughs> off or do you want it? You can't be both. Pick one. <laughs> Am I driving you nuts? <laughs> Always. Um, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, so for, for for Josh, uh, buy it, um, buy lots of it and uh, stack it deep. Buy it yeah. cheap, stack it deep, I think is the saying. And where, you, and yeah, so I just totally contradicted this, but where we can find it. I mean, like, there, there is stuff out there. It's not wherever you can find it because 9 millimeter 223, like, there's still lots of it out there. You just have to find a good price and buy a lot of it. And a lot of it is thousands, like, 2,000 rounds. Yeah. If for, for like someone who doesn't do a lot of shooting right now, if you were to buy 2,000 rounds, you're probably good for a couple of years. Probably. I don't know. Probably. I, don't know I think I went I through 5,000 rounds of a Gila last summer. How is that possible? That's How is that possible? Because I was giving away my rifle and people were there using my go. ammo. So you didn't go through it. You gave yeah, away 5,000 rounds. Other people you were yeah. shooting at. Yeah, okay. I... I figured that out. I went, holy crap, that's a lot of ammo. And, ooh, yeah, that's Should've a lot of Should have been using the uh, bucket of bullets, right? Yeah, I know. I or, didn't want that going know. through my piece of crap rifle. Or I mean, going through Your my nice rifle. rifle. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. So there's there's some good brands for 22. I really like the CCI standard velocity. Aguila is nice, especially that copper-plated stuff that uh, – uh, your, your stuff's copper plated, right? It's stuff copper plated. Like. It's a high velocity. Yeah. 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 That stuff's really good. Um, and then if, if you're, if you're going to shoot a match where it makes sense to, and you're going to be steady enough, then you get into the more exotic 22s, uh, 22 ammo choices. But for most shooters, uh, if you're shooting positional standing, kneeling prone, you're probably not going to notice the difference between any 22 ammo, not between the accuracy, at least maybe between the reliability. Yeah. Uh, nine millimeter we talked about two two three i also buy it cheap and stack it deep i mean for three gun we don't we're not shooting far out uh well we're only shooting like 350 max kind of a thing so for 350 yards blaster ammo is fine 55 grain is is fine if we went further than that you might want to look at like a 65 or a 70 or 77 that's expensive stuff though that's not like yeah. cheap ammo and i like if if I was a top shooter in a place where we shot really far distances, I might sight my rifle in for a 77 or a match grade long distance uh, bullet. Um, but with a maximum distance of like 350, which is what we're doing right now, I could do that with 55 grain all day long. It's just not worth getting anything more expensive and switching the sights around between them. What about for hunting ammo? What about like center fire hunting hunting uh, ammo? What do you what do you get? What do you use, Trevor? I mean, core lock, Remington core lock, $20 a box. Like, dude, I have, you know, but uh, it was because of that's what the guy had in his gun. But mm -hmm. typically, I load all my own hunting ammo because I want my hunting ammo to basically be precision match ammo. I reload my hunting ammo to the same degree of precision that I reload, you know, long range match ammo. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll try a couple of things and I'll go with what groups best at 100. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the most expensive ammo. It'll mm -hmm. be the bullet construction that I want. And uh, I'll go with what group's best. And like I told the story while ago, with my Thompson's Intervention Predator, the, the best ammo for that gun ended up being the cheapest. So it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. You just I mean, test like some the, stuff. The cup and core construction, like a traditional bullet construction, is very simple and repeatable so often that those cheap bullets are pretty accurate like usually core locked is is decently accurate in a gun what i don't like about it is when it, uh using it in a high velocity uh cartridge where i might get hits close in because those mm -hmm. core locks will just spew lead everywhere when you when you hit and uh you you will get lead in your meat like little flecks of lead in your meat um, if you use a traditional bullet construction and you whack a deer at close range with some high velocity, like if you, if you were to use like a 270 with a, a 130 grain bullet, or if you were to use a 300 wind mag with a lighter bullet, or even like a 30 out six with a, uh, a, like a 150 grain bullet, that those bullets will lose lead and shed lead in the meat, and it will get in some weird places, and you don't really want to be consuming lead, so. Um, I would say for like a high velocity, like a higher, like 2,800 FPS and up, uh, expected impact. Uh, that's where a bonded bullet might be nicer. 
just because it'll hold together a little bit better. Or if you want to like really be safe from lead, you could try going copper bullets. Again, okay, only if you worry about those kind of things, worry about lead levels, copper bullets would uh, would be better in the, in those situations. Yeah. Um, I would talk about duck ammo, but I don't hunt ducks very often. I use the cheapest stuff possible, which probably doesn't group very well, but it kills ducks and geese and whatever. It does the job. <clears throat> it does the job. Yeah. Yeah. Shotgun ammo for three gun, whatever's reliable. I, I found the Challenger is the cheapest stuff I could get locally here. I can't get any reliability out of it. Not enough to, to satisfy me. The reliability would be like, uh, uh, I would have one jam per 20 or so. And that is frustrating on the clock. So Even that in the end, I was reloading. Because I was tailoring my load. My Versamax would cycle a one ounce load. Mm -hmm. Reduce recoil, still knock over my poppers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. You you make your trade offs there. For me, I I like just running a standard eighth and an uh, ounce and an eighth uh, uh, Winchester. I certainly had to with the uh, Typhoon. Yeah, yeah. For for a lot of the semi autos, you need to run heavier. With my gun, it was more of uh, we have to shoot spinners. Sometimes we have to shoot plates that are a little bit further away. More lead is always better for knocking those those targets over. So I just run one standard weight all the time. If they made ounce and a quarter. I would run that because <laughs> I don't care about the recoil as much as I care about knocking over whatever I'm shooting at. Um, anything else to talk about ammo? When to buy it cheap? When to pay more? I mean, if you were into match shooting, you might you might pay more or you might just reload. The suggestion would be, it. yeah, to yeah. reload to tailor it and it might yeah. be even cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I can't think of anything else. And I mean, if you're going to run hunting ammo for a low velocity, close in uh, game, whatever's cheapest is fine. Like if you were to go hunting with a 3030, I don't think there's a cartridge you can buy that's not going to work for it. They'll, they'll all work 150, 180, whatever's cheap and works. It's it, like if you're shooting a, a deer at 100 yards, it doesn't matter what you're hitting them with, really. Yeah. A lot of I people this... put put a way, like invest way too much in their ammo selection for or their rifle or cartridge for deer hunting, and then they shoot their stupid deer at a hundred yards. It's like, man, anything would have killed that deer <laughs> at a hundred yards. Anything. Ah, oh, they flopped over dead. They would have done that with anything. <laughs> you hit them with anything at a hundred yards. It's all going to do the job. Doesn't matter what the, about the bullet I... or the cartridge or any of this kind of stuff. Did I tell you I'm going to go deer hunting this year? Yeah. Several so times, good. yeah. That's why you're getting your hunter course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of rifle do you have for hunting deer? Nothing yet. Mm. I'm shopping. Mm. Oh, that's going to be a main topic. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I like it. Let's turn that into a main topic, Kelly. All the different options and calibers you could consider. Oh, my God. I'm getting emails already from people. I'm going to get, like, flooded. 6.5 grade more. Okay. 2.3. I know, eh? Mm. 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 Questions. All right, uh, let's probably, get into... Yeah, probably 243. Okay, 243. go ahead. Three. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that later, though. Uh, okay. Listener feedback. Let's get into listener feedback on Facebook. Thoughts on the letters we're receiving, uh, the RCMP revocation. Yeah, we talked, talked about that. It. Yeah. Anything else showing up there? I'm, I haven't really taken a look there. Uh, no, they were just talking along the lines, the same thing with... Uh, they were making suggestions. CCI Minimix... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a lever revolution. That stuff's good yeah. for it gets better BC. So like when I, I said within 100 yards, if you're going to go further than 100 yards with 3030 or one of those other uh, cartridges that a lever revolution makes for them, uh, you get a, a much better uh, ballistic coefficient with those. So that's better for long range energy. Uh, let's see. On to listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full-service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, park rising, and Cerakote finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca. Kelly, do you want to take this first one from Nathan? Okay, so it says, hi guys. I was hoping uh, everyone is doing well. First thing first, I would like to thank Rod, Tracy, and everyone at CCFR for all the hard work. 
I, okay, I'm not sure they're listening, but we'll tell them uh, they're doing it and it's much appreciated. They actually really are doing a, a really good job and we appreciated it too. So uh, I do have a question uh, and some show ideas. My question is, I was wondering what the effort for the FRT, I keep hearing people say that it's a suggestion, not law. You're right, actually. For example, I emailed Alberta Tactical and they told me that the FRT is not law and that they are taking the government to court over the classification change for the modern sporter. So if the FRT isn't law, then how can someone uh, be charged based on the FRT that doesn't make any sense? And uh, then he goes on to say, now I was thinking for a show idea that you guys could try and get Colin Noir. We have been, by the way, trying to get him on. We've been reaching out to him on the show. I think it would be cool to have him being a lawyer and all and give us his views on the laws and the lawsuits going against the government. Another show I would love to see is about uh, competition shooting. Last show you guys were talking about mods and it was great, but you can also, but you also talked about how one gun would fit into one division. I'm trying to get into competitive shooting uh, myself. So I would love to see a show about the different divisions and what firearms fit those divisions or what would, what sport um, are we talking about? What yeah. would put it into those divisions? So, um, yeah, we need to know that too as well there. What sport may be, is he talking about Ipsic or I don't know. Uh, Adriel, do you remember would, what we were talking about? It would be interesting with, with Nathan. With, I'm, not, I'm not sure. It, it yeah. would be interesting if uh, Nathan, let us know what sport you're thinking of. And uh, yeah. maybe what we can. What is that? Is somebody dying in the background somewhere? Dogs. It sounds like a dog. I, just let them in. That's going. great. Anyways, yeah. anyway, I gotta get going and change my dog's name from Dixie to Lady A. Speaking of dogs, uh, stay safe and keep up the great work. I'm gonna mute myself and kick my dogs outside so they don't kill each yeah. other. Yeah. So for yeah, Nathan, uh, let us know what uh, what sport you're competing in, and we'll talk about it on a future show. I think we've talked about divisions with Ipsic and that kind of thing. I Several don't times, think yeah. I don't think we've talked about mods for guns in those divisions. And what mm, would be applicable? Not, yeah, top 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 five mods for production, top five mods for classic, that sort of thing, or standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the the rules have changed quite a bit yep, in, the, in the last two years here, so now you can do some some more interesting stuff. So I think that yep. might be that, that might be an interesting one. Um, and then same thing. Yeah, if it's three gun, we can talk about that. If it's um, uh, PPC, we don't have any idea. Um, yeah, I can't remember what we were talking about. Yeah. yeah, he'll do a follow up email. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Trevor, do you want to take the next one from Josh? From Josh, 180K shell deflector. When you reviewed this on the hunting gear guy, you mentioned a shell deflector, and I cannot find one anywhere. Where the heck can you buy these things? Thanks. And then he sent the follow-up. Do you want to answer that question, then I'll do the follow-up? Uh, go ahead and do the follow-up. I'm just going to see if I can find it on eBay. Perhaps you could do a show or just discuss the difference between 1911 platform versus a revolver platform. Pros and cons of each and uh, for a new versus experienced shooter. Someone that likes to tinker versus someone that likes to shoot. Recently, I traded my 1911 and have all revolvers. I find them more accurate However, I'm very new to the pistol game. Thoughts? All right, I'll cover this one. <laughs> okay, a difference between the 1911 platform versus a revolver? Well, uh, I will state the obvious, not to be insulting or condescending, although I can't help but sound that way because it's just the way I am. 1911s are semi-automatic magazine-fed pistols, and revolvers are garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when you revolvers... first started and you hated 1911s? Yeah, sure, I, I just, did. Okay. Yeah. And yep. just mentioning the obvious. Okay, yep. good. So, um, the, so the revolver platform is going to typically be um, less ergonomic. It's going to have a high bore axis. It's going to have more muzzle rise. It's going to have a long, heavy trigger pull. It's going to have limited capacity. Slow the to reload. It's very slow to reload, yep. Now, um, they are accurate. In the right yeah, hand, they, are. they yep. can be an accurate platform. So um, the 1911, the pros are, if you're a tinkerer, the sky is the limit. It is, in fact, a platform. Adriel discussed platforms last episode. And um, what that means is the 
firearm known as the 1911 is being manufactured by several different companies around the world and the aftermarket support for that platform is tremendous. You can buy all means of parts for the gun and performance parts to enhance its performance, increase its accuracy, increase its comfort. There's nothing that you can't do to a 1911. It is probably the most customizable pistol on the planet because it has been an incredibly popular platform and has been around well over a hundred years. So um, for a new shooter, 1911 would be easier to shoot than a revolver. Now you may have some uh, reliability issues depending on the quality and the grade of the 1911. So this can be considered a con unless you're competent and have some skills and knowledge and can make the gun run, you might be better off with a revolver. If you just want to go to the range and plank, a revolver might be right for you. If you want to tinker, if you want to get into competition, if you like to customize, then definitely a 1911. And I'm going to recommend a 1911 in 9mm because one, you're going to have 10 round capacity without a bunch of magazines sticking out the bottom. It's not going to look awkward. Two, 9mm yep. is just so much more affordable to shoot yep. than, a, than a 45. If you get a 45, you're going to be limited to seven or eight rounds. If you want a flush fitting magazine, if you don't mind an extended magazine sticking at the bottom, looking like a tumor hanging off the ass of your gun, then you can get the 10 round 45 mag. But I like the nine mil. They're flush fitting. It's cheaper to shoot. It's still a 1911 platform, highly customizable. So I think that about covers it all. Or you could get a Shadow One, a used Shadow One for 700 Don't be bucks. that asshole. Don't be that guy. Some guy comes on your internet and says, Glocker 1911, and you would answer, get a revolver. Just, you know, he didn't no, I'd ask say Shadow. I'd say Shadow. Uh, yeah, whatever. Revolver. You yeah, just, yeah. yeah, don't be that guy. I'm not the revolver guy. I tried, I've tried several times liking revolvers. Should I give a four or a Chev? You need a Shadow. That's what you need. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, that's the way this went. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Adriel, where did you get the um, – oh, Kelly, did you have anything else to add that I may have missed, 1911 versus revolver? No. All right, where did you get the shell deflector, Adriel? eBay. All right, There's eBay it is. Them. Google WK180. There's a couple different styles. People are just 3D printing them, so, yeah, they're out there. Uh, next one from – Dave, good morning, Slam Fire Radio. After many long night, uh, long months of waiting, last weekend I attended my first Project Maple Seed course. The experience was great with fantastic instruction and some exciting weather. I cannot recommend this course enough to anyone interested in learning the fundamentals of shooting. It was a pleasure to meet Kelly, get some Slam Fire swag, and even achieve rifleman. The particip he, participants. He was... Okay, go ahead. Never mind. Sorry. The participants were all eager to learn, and no one let the thunderstorm or tornado warnings dampen their spirits. <laughs> well, the thunderstorm probably dampened more than just your spirit. <laughs> yeah, dampened. I see uh, what you did there, you clever boy. Oh, by the way, my camera, my my Canon camera, mm -hmm. the one that the maple seed camera, yeah, it didn't work it, after a while, and but I got it resurrected. I can take. Yay! It. Left it in a bag of rice or something like that. No, I just left it out on the table and everything air and I took all the parts apart it and left it in the sun and it baked. So took sweet. all the parts apart it. Yeah. That's, that's how you, you call it. Yeah. Yeah. A parted. You, a parted. Parted. I took all the parts apart it there, me. Okay. Sorry <laughs> I interrupted. Uh, I fixed uh, my camera. I took all the parts of the parts. <laughs> it's my French there, it's my French slash sun. German slash oh. English. Yeah. It, culture. Uh sorry, Dave, you have a fantastic email. It's beautiful. So I'll let Adriel continue. Uh, I have already been back out to the range to continue practicing the skills I was taught, and I look forward to testing my skills in an ORPS match later this year. Thanks, Kelly and Angel, for promoting Project Maple Seed, as I have uh, I may not have found it without you. Thanks from a regular listener, Dave. Thank you, Dave. And Dave was probably the most quiet, unassuming guy that was on the line, and he also had the highest score of the day as well. Great well, shooter. Like myself. Really, really good shooter. You mean Adriel? Yes. No, quiet and good shooter. That's me on the line oh. at Maple Seed. Yeah, no, that's the exact opposite quiet of part. you. Uh, good and shooter. You're a good shooter, but Adriel's better. Also, uh, oh! <laughs> cut me deep. <laughs> good. Good. Yeah. Not a 
pistol shooting, but no. no. He can shoot the hell out of some maple seed and some gophers. Yes, yes he can. Yeah. Kill some gophers in the face. All From right. Chris. Hey, guys and gal. I have been looking at getting a PCC, possibly using it for competition. I'm just curious as to what you would suggest for a PCC. Most of the reading I've done on the subject names many firearms that are no longer legal in Canada. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Chris, I think, uh, uh, Trevor, you would recommend the FX9, correct? <laughs> Though the guy I sold the Scrib machine to liked it so much he bought another one. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And he's been shooting the hell out of it with zero problems. Well, there you go. <laughs> Oh, it was a you good. problem. You were double tapping your trigger too fast. That's yes. it. Yeah, that's that, it. that 18 pound stock gritty piece of crap factory trigger. I was just all right. Too much man for it. Yeah, just doubling up on that. Uh, Ruger PC carbine. Yeah, and there's J JR carbine. There's what's, what's he want it for? I'm looking at getting a PCC. Oh, then not the Ruger and not the JR. Go with Thuron. Thuron Defense oh, has yeah. oh, that thing's expensive, released. Though. Yeah. He did. He give us a budget, or did he ask for a gun for competition? Yeah. Shut up. The Thuron Defense released basically a three gun competition model. It has. Is it here? Is it in Canada? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. selling this. It's been out for a while. I saw it at the uh, North Silva show like two years ago. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the just right is okay, but ergonomically it's kind of bad. Yes, the charging handle is reversible, but the magazine yes, release is. is in an awful location. Yeah. I mean, if you get a if you get an FX9 that doesn't blow up, then that's great. It's, it's not. Why? Well, yeah, you're the only person that I've really heard that's had the problem. Trevor had the same problem, oh, and yeah, go no online way. and do some reading as I did. <laughs> yes, is a known problem. So, just because okay. the gun should be designed about. not to fire out a battery, you no. would think. Yes, you know it's not that, a feature. That's, not that's to mention the fact you that you should be putting into a gun. So there's a pin that retains the firing pin, much like an AR. It gets beat to crap. I brought but, it to their attention. You know what they did? They sent me another pin. Oh, oh, that's how we're fixing it. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. I see what's going on here. That is not unlike the M and P fifteen twenty two, though. Sure, but we're not talking about that gun. We're talking about saying. whether or not he should get an FX nine. <laughs> so, um, not that one yeah, or the look, MP. <laughs> no. Look into the Thuron oh, the Defense MP. competition model. Start there. The thing about the just right is the magazine okay. release is in a horrible spot All the right. ruger is way too heavy and the extractor wears out gallon's getting good customer service but the fact is that uh the gun too heavy what, what's weight on the on the ruger pc carbine somewhere between a sherman and a panzer <laughs> it's not that bad i didn't think they're that bad says the I girl who's bad. never used one in a match i've shot it several times in a match? no so Seven. i mean standing on a line shooting it means nothing Seven pounds. Okay, you know Seven what? pounds is the weight of them. That's there not that go. bad. That's okay. not that bad. So, I think it's heavier than that. So if he has decided that he's not going to get the third in defense because he can't, you know, sell a kidney, what's the next best thing? The third on defense is like less than a competition AR. He wants a competition gun. I've recommended what I think is the best, most appropriate choice. Okay, so next After down the list. After that, if he can get an FX9, doesn't blow up, the FX9. Okay. And then after that, that Uzi thing. No, no not actually. <laughs> not actually. No. Uh, not actually. I mean, there's that TWAS no, no, star, but that's stop not it. a competition gun. You that's like a, yourself for even thinking such a thing. I'm, I'm going next down the line. Next You're down, way the, down line, the line. That's, You're that's so far down, down the line. Yeah, it's way down <laughs> the line. That's more of like a canoe gun. That's That would be something yeah, you would stick in your canoe to, yeah. or a survival rifle, right? Um, I'm pretty sure those Thurion def the Thurion defenses are fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred bucks. That's a little share. I wish the FX9 didn't fire out a battery because that would be. Oh, I think everybody does. <laughs> that would be like the the easy option because they're a lot cheaper than yeah. that. And I think like the Thurion defenses kind of look a little bit ugly. Mm. Yeah. The yeah. new one doesn't though. The new one doesn't. Yeah, this competition uh, one I'm talking about. Oh, I think I found one. One second. Let me let me share my screen. This one? It, it's yeah. got to be this one because the forehand on this one looks pretty good. And the word competition is in the title. Hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. that's the one. 
and see where the magazine release is <gasps> above the trigger guard. Uh, and nice. where's the charging yep. handle on Who's the left that? side? Nice. All the yep. ergonomics. Hey, Adriel, where is that? What side is that? Oh, it's one, one stalls. stalls. Yeah. Okay. 1600 bucks. Out of stock. Boom. Uh, is it out of stock? Yes, this is out of stock right now. But that's that's but that's order. the one. Bring it in through our run guns. Do the gray market if you want. Except most mil spec and drop in competition triggers. So I would, I would budget for one of those as well because I don't know what it comes with, but none of them are very good. Yeah. Well, if you're spending $1,600 on it, you might want a good trigger. Yeah. And a red dot. Yeah. Nice, so, nice little red dot to put on there. Yeah. Cool. All anyways. right. If you'd like to email the show, send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Uh, Patreon supporters, we have no new Patreons, but if you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash slamfireradio, and you can help us with hosting and uh, lighting and cameras and computers and that kind of thing. Uh, well, shout out. Therapy. Ah, I don't need therapy. Apparently you do, though. No, I need to give you the therapy. <laughs> this is actually part of it. This all is this, my therapy. The, this is your therapy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> For the audio my shout out is to, is to uh, Patreone, uh, Jessica. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have come on tonight. Oh, that's nice. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I detect sarcasm. That's who to blame. That's who to blame, I Jessica. don't think you're grateful to Jessica for having me come on. Thanks, Jessica. But... <laughs> What that's saying to me is, let's talk about this. You're the new therapist. Uh, that's, we're not, Ed, Adriel and I aren't important enough, and neither are the listeners for you to come on. However, Jessica's just, a listener. Yeah. So you can scratch that off. Now let's talk about <laughs> Adriel. Adriel is very important to me. I enjoy my time with him. You can tell by how little I shit on him. Next. <laughs> Still a little bit, though. <laughs> Every chance I get, you yeah, bald bastard. <laughs> Truth is, I like Kelly more than you, but it's just a little yeah. easier to pick on Kelly. I just let you. You know that, right? I do. I do. And like I said, we don't do this in person. No, we I, don't. No, this is not a thing in person. <laughs> <laughs> no, if he did it to me in person. I get kicked in the nuts. <laughs> Clearly, you'd cut me. Yeah, I would, actually. Yeah. Hard to, I look hard at to him cut and someone I'd over say. the internet. You're too Trevor? busy hugging me in person for me to I have know. a kid. I miss and, you so much. And I ain't saying nothing because I figure you'll put me in a clinch and next thing you know, it's a rear naked choke and I'm out. So <laughs> <laughs> she's got she's got a Wake up in a pool of blood. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, saving my shanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you, Shiv, Shiv, Shiv. <laughs> well then. Uh, Kelly? Anyways, I do have a couple. So I have one for Chris T, Chris Titchler. He actually listens to the show as well. So, um, but I wanted to also say thank you to him and also Warren Fields for hosting us. It was a fantastic time. I'm so happy that we went and it was uh, probably one of the most challenging uh, maple seeds that we've ever had uh, weather-wise, um, but it was so much fun too. And I go there again in the heartbeat. And I also wanted to say thank you to Chris, uh, sorry, to Rick, uh, Chris and Greg for also working in the event. And I also wanted to say happy birthday, Bon Fet, to Denis. It's his birthday today. Oh, damn it. Well, I, I mean, know. I already, I, I he did it on his wall, but really. <sighs> Good for Kelly you. got him on the show. Yeah, way to yeah. remember. Good better than us. You know what? a contest, Kelly, and you win. You win, the, you win the birthday me. round. He matters. Mm. To me. Oh, <laughs> he, he matters more to me than you. Not mm. than not than you. Not enough to remember the birthday though. <laughs> Can't yeah. dig up on that one. <laughs> he also matters to me. He matters know, to me more than he does. he does to you. There you go. I think I got it right that time. I've insulted everybody. What the I'd throw in the there we go. give up. Hang Good up job. Call. Well done. Anyways, happy uh, birthday, Denny. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to just uh, the ITs for helping out the Lattice Maple Seed and uh, making sure they're all running real smooth. You guys, you guys are like a running a smooth run machine out there. Yeah, we got our thing going on. It's uh, I just pack up the battle van with uh, a bunch <laughs> of crap, and uh, it's the Maple Seed minivan. And, it's the Maple uh, Seed minivan. I have I bought a new car last year, my, and. Uh, and the tactical Tiguan is on the road again this weekend. Mm. 
I like the fact that my minivan is crappy and rusting and I take the like muddy T post straight out of the ground and yeah. fire it in the back. And I don't feel bad about, at all about it. I, I put in my fairness. The... If it was a brand new caravan, you wouldn't feel bad about it. I mm. might a little bit if it was brand no. new, mm. no. but I've like, this thing doesn't owe me anything. And therefore I treat it like garbage <laughs> as well. You should. Mm -hmm. Uh, Finally, uh, please join a National Firearms Association, such as the CCFR. Check us out on Gunners of Canada, like us on Facebook, and reach out to your city councillor now to talk about municipal handgun bans. Send them an email or something like that. Even if you've talked to them before, send them another email or her another email. Get, like, make sure that they know that you don't want this stuff because uh, sooner or later, they're going to vote on it. And uh, it would be nice if they didn't vote against you because otherwise... You're going to have to sell your handgun to people like me who are going to pay you less than what it's worth. Or even better, run against them in the next municipal election. I love your honesty, Adriel. Idea. Yep. <laughs> My honesty is I will be buying your handguns at uh, discount prices. <laughs> if you don't want to sell your handgun for discount prices, talk to your municipal uh, counselor. Right. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. And, and sorry. If you're looking to buy handguns at discounted prices, check out my CGN ads. Now we'll see <laughs> nice you next week. Nice plug. <laughs> <laughs>